Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been two weeks since my last confession. I told you that my husband Gualtier was murdered on our way here by bandits, driven mad by this plague. I lied. These bandits, these men, they, they, no. Father, should the cruel not suffer the sting of cruelty in return? missed the start of the festivities. <laughs> the games, the stories. Of course. I had told Gualtieri he didn't mention. No. My apologies. I appointed that each day while we wait out this plague sickness in Florence, we shall all tell each other stories, so thoughts of our homes and families should not weigh too heavily. Yes? Yes. Good. But I can't find Alyssa. The food's served and we're due to start. Would you possibly mind searching for her? Of course. Excellent. Good, I'll get things started then. Good ladies, good gentlemen, please eat, please drink, but I yield to Pampinea as the regent of our first day of festivities. <laughs> I will tell the story of the master Ciappelletto. Elisa. 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 Elisa! Elisa! And I hear there is still a chapel out there in Burgundy dedicated to our good friend, Ciappelletto. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies, gentlemen, a pause in our stories, please, while I, uh... yes. Don't hurry so much after her, do you know? It's unseemly. Lady Loretta. <laughs> <laughs> you missed my story. I'm sorry. I was sorry to hear of your husband's passing. Yes. I imagine DNA will be another 15 or 20 minutes, depending on his constitution. And so I think it well overdue for our next story. If Alyssa will not come, I will bring her out myself. Why were you acting as if the bishop philosopher was that man, Chapeletta, when I walked in? Chapeletta was only a character for my story. I needed a stand-in. I thought good philostrator would be an adequate substitute, as he, by dint of his office, must surely be exempt from all of Chapeletta's immorality. Pericone di Visaggio, a man well acquainted with wine. It was part of Dionel's game. Each day, a story from each guest and a regent to preside over proceedings, so that we shall neither fall into idle sin, nor too heavily mourn the plague sickness affecting our fair city of Florence. I missed the introductions. Yes, well, you were delayed. Oh, my Lord Sut! You know Dionel, of course? Only through my husband, Gualtieri. Well, Dionel has a lusty appetite, and a compulsive need to have things exactly his way. Keeps exceptionally poor company, but 
does his best to do right by his guests. That sounds a poor consolation. He's the kind of man that hosts a party for people he barely knows while Florence falls to pieces. You make him sound like a new Nero. Or would you rather jump into the fire with those bandits and the plague? And so, post haste, Alatiel was returned to her rightful group. <coughs> Stay back from me! Please, would everyone return to their rooms until this evening's meal? Philostrato has just had too much to drink. <laughs> I will escort him back to his bed. Good day, good day. Do you know, what of Elissa? Damn it. I had business with the bishop. Pompanea, help me. I must find out why this is happening. This is a curse and I blame myself. Not everything follows you. But I couldn't help, even if it was true. The Lord has a plan for us, but it is a strange one and we are a very small part of it. Even small players have their roles to play. Good day, Pompanea. There was once a rash man, Nostagio, who had fallen into a deep depression. Alone one evening and wandering in the woods, he saw a damsel come running through a thicket, with her clothes asunder and her hair catching in the briars, weeping and crying sore for mercy. At her heels were two mastiffs and a rider on ghoulish horseback threatening her with death in foul and fearsome words. <laughs> Nostagio leapt in front of the knight. Certes, I will protect her. <laughs> Nostagio braced himself for a blow that never came. The knight had stopped and explained that she was cursed to reenact her slaughter each night. Despite the knight's certainty in his mission, Nostagio could not scry whether the punishment was intended for the now distant, illusory wisp of the woman, or the bloody hulk of flesh and metal in front of him. Tianeo, storytelling is all well and good, but has little to do with the matter at hand? Yes. Lady Alyssa and Philostrato have fallen sick with all the signs of the Florentine plague. Then we shall leave immediately. Quiet! No. There are many infected in Florence and on the roads and only a few here. Rogues. Vagabonds. My friend Gualtieri has already died at their hands. I will not create more widows at the hands of these devils. You know, you said only a few were infected. Exactly how many? I recommend checking yourselves carefully for the signs of the infection. Blackness, swelling, rot. A feeling of sickness, heat or cold. It's a death sentence, Dianeo. How many cases have you confirmed, Dianeo? Three. The Lady Alyssa, Philostrato, and just recently myself. I will leave in the morning. Who is with me? It is best to we'll remain meet the here. the door daughter pray, and then we will depart. Who is with me? Fiametta. 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 Get off me! Do you have it? No. You best come inside. I decided to help. What else should one do in Rome but fiddle? Do you know if the symptoms always present in the order of the infection? I know that they do not. I should bid you good night, Fiametta. I sincerely hope to see you in the morning and hear your deductions. Do you know why Lady Loretta hates Alyssa so? 
they lay together. Loretta hates her as she hates herself for what she sees as an arch sin. I do not. Good night, Lady Fiametta. It's safer to stay in a house of sickness than to risk it out there. It's safer here than it is out there. It's madness to stay, Dionio. We will take provisions and fashion clubs to order fans. I'm sure there'll be little need for that, Lady Loretta. Yes. Lady Alyssa, I had not expected to see you out and about so soon. I thought I would take as much pleasure as I could out of the days I have left, as my strength and grace permits me. Lady Pampanea! Lady Pampanea tells me that you have adopted the same philosophy. You have found a task in which to place your energies before Providence takes you. I have been trying to figure out what is causing this plague. Have you had much success? I think so. Good! Would you take me back to my room? I want to preserve myself for later. Uh, yes. I am glad Elisa has found some degree of happiness. Do you think you truly have it? Yes. It's spread through shared beds, starting with Lady Loretta. Does that answer replace what you had wanted to hear from our friend the bishop? Yes. No. Only so much as one thing is exchangeable for another. Bed hopping for the confession box. You know, you were to be Dionel's regent today. Is there an exchange for my queen's story? The Marquis of Saluza never thought to take a wife. But eventually, his eyes settled on a farmer's daughter, plucked from the crowd. In a new setting, the young wife changed her mind and her manners and her clothes. She bore herself with such graciousness and such loving kindness that nothing ill could be said of the Marquis's decision. Some spark other than wisdom stirred her husband's mind. The Marquis spirited his newborn children away from his wife's care, pretending their executions, telling her that his people would not accept a farmer's daughter's son as their lord's heir. Soon after, he produced counterfeit letters from His Holiness in Rome, detailing the annulment of their marriage. My lord, I ever knew my mean estate to be no wise sortable with your nobility. For that which I have been with you, I have still confessed myself indebted to you and to God. Nor have I ever held nor made it mine as given to me, but have still accounted it, but as a loan. She went back to her father's house. Soon the Marquis put it about that he found a new bride and dragooned his once wife into arranging the festivities, the bridal chamber, the halls and such as only she who had served him so diligently knew how. It was only as the ceremony was in progress that the Marquis unfolded the veil of his under-young bride to reveal his own daughter, his son, a ring bear close by. It is now time that thou reap the fruits of thy long patience. I have probed thee and taught thee how to be my wife. I restore thee at one stroke that which I took from thee at many and do requite thee with a supreme delight the pangs which I inflicted on thee. Despite the Marquis's words, the probes and lessons never ceased. The 
Some years later, husband and wife are out traveling. Their children sent far away to be tutored in Milan. The Marquis's foot twisted and he slipped into a deep, dry ravine, unable to move. He called out to his wife. She decided God had anointed her time to return her husband's testing. With rock, she probed his wise head for its endurance and at one stroke restored him to the supreme delight of our creator. So you see, Pampanea, it is worth reasoning effects from causes. But I do not know if God punishes women more for their enactments. I must have faith that he does not. I have to go, Pampanea. I have to find my children. Would you come with me? <laughs>